good morning <coughs> my dear friends so this is our first lecture on quantitative aptitude i will be giving topics on mathematics the first nine chapters of your study material the first chapter you see that it is on ratio and proportion it is very essential that you understand the basic ideas in ratios and proportion and also in every one of the chapters the questions in the examinations are said to test whether you are able to understand the basic concept and check the correct answer among the four alternatives bear in mind that there is a negative marking unless you are sure that the question for which you are going to give the answer is correct do not take a chance in picking a wrong answer thereby you will lose one fourth of the mark we see several students getting 98 99 had they not chosen some of the wrong choices definitely should have got through so make sure that you are able to answer at least about 120 to 130 correct question and then you can take a list sometimes there might be ambiguous questions whether b is true or c is true and thereby you can take a little risk not more than about 10% of the question now we start with ratio and proportion what do you mean by ratio first of all we have to understand that ratio is a comparative measure we compare your age with my age you say that you are 18 i am 72 the ratio is 18 is to 72 but we express in the lowest form we say that this is same as 1 is to 4 so we now introduce the concept of ratio what you say a ratio now you see that a ratio is denoted by the symbol a is to b we say that a ratio is a comparative measure comparing two quantities of the same kind and at the same unit of measurement what i mean is that i am comparing your age with my age same kind both in years for example your height and my height are to be compared one in centimeters other in inches is not appropriate therefore both should be either in centimeters or in inches so the same unit of measurement sometimes we also denote a ratio by the symbol a over b so we now write a ratio in the form a is to b or a over b when you take three quantities we give a special name for the first component a and the second component b the first component a is called antecedent j is called antecedent the second component b is called consequent a is called the antecedent and b is called the consequent j is to b is the ratio we denoted by the symbol a over b also in case the comparison is between two quantities if you have three quantities we denote in the form a is to b is to c likewise any number of quantities could be used in the form a is to b is to c is to d etc now we consider the ratio a is to b already we introduce the technical term for the two components a and b we call j as antecedent and we call b as consequent now we introduce the concept of inverse ratio inverse ratio what do you mean by inverse ratio for any ratio a is to b a 
we call these to A is the inverse ratio. We call these to A as the inverse ratio. Why the name the inverse ratio came in is that for the ratio A by B and then B by A the product is 1. We also call it the reciprocal ratio or B inverse ratio. Having introduced the concept of a ratio with a special name to the components antecedent and consequent and the inverse ratio, the question comes that is it possible to combine two or more ratios? There we introduce the concept as compound ratio. We introduce the concept as compound ratio. Compounding the ratio means that we are combining two or more ratios. It is equivalent to the product of the ratios. What we mean by the component of ratio is the following. Suppose we have a ratio A is to B, another ratio C is to D. For the simplest case, we are considering two ratios. A is to B and C is to C. A rule very similar to multiplication of numbers we now introduce in the ratios and we call this rule as compounding of ratios. Now you see that the ratio created out of this AC is to BD. So if you have a two ratios A is to B and C is to D AC is to BD is the compounded ratio. AC is to B is the compounded ratio. To understand in a simpler form, we can also write that the ratio A is to B and the ratio C is to D. This is equivalent to the ratio AC by BD or AC is to BD. You can multiply any number of such ratios. This is the simplest one. We have considered two ratios. If you consider the ratio A by B, C by D, E by R, the compounded ratio is A, C, E by B, D, R. So now we understand that two or more ratios can be compounded into a single ratio. That's the meaning of compounding of ratios. Now, can you compound a ratio with it itself? You will be able to distinguish a quadrilateral and a square. A quadrilateral is four-sided figure. The square is also a four-sided figure. No doubt, you can call a square a quadrilateral. There is some more special properties which general quadrilaterals do not possess. Like that, if you compound the ratio A by B with A by B, this is also a compounded ratio. You have A square by B square. We have A square by B square. We will now give a special name for this type of ratios. Now, we are going there. A square is B square is called the duplicate ratio. of A is to B. We give a special name as the duplicate ratio. A squared by B squared is called the duplicate ratio of A is to B. Likewise, 
instead of squaring you take the square root now your a square is to be square to call it a duplicate ratio the root a is to root b this is called the sub duplicate ratio the sub duplicate ratio of a is to b a square is to b square is called the duplicate ratio of a is to b root a is to root b is called the sub duplicate ratio of a is to b likewise how do you call a cube is to b cube you now take the ratio a cube is to b cube the components are caught by cubing the components of the ratio a is to b so this is called the triplicate ratio of a is to b a cube is to b cube is called the triplicate ratio of a is to b likewise cube root of a is to cube root of b is called the sub triplicate ratio of a is to b cube root of a is to cube root of b is called the sub triplicate the triplicate ratio of a is to b so so far we have introduced what is meant by a ratio the simplest form we denote it by a is to b <coughs> any question a is to b or a over b we do special name for the component a and the component b how do you call it these quantities you call a as the antecedent b is called the consequent then we have introduced the concept of inverse ratio you reverse the components for the ratio a is to b b is to a is the inverse for the ratio 4 is to 7 7 is to 4 is the inverse so we introduce inverse ratio we only mean that the product of the two ratios is 1 a over b into b over a is equal to 1 then we say each ratio is the inverse of other if you call for a is to b b is to a is the inverse we can also call for b is to a a is to b is the inverse and in understood what is meant by a ratio we introduce compounding of ratios combining two or more ratios just like in arithmetic we introduce the concept of addition subtraction multiplication and division so do here we introduce the concept of compounding of two or more ratios the definition for compounding of ratio is given in this form if you have a ratio a is to b and another ratio c is to d the compounded ratio is denoted by a c is to b d we are multiplying the first component multiplying by the second component to write in a more convenient form we write a over b into c over b as the compounded ratio this is simplified in the form a c over b d a c over b d same as the ratio a c is to b d effectively we mean that compounding of ratios is equivalent to the multiplication of these ratios when you multiply you get the numerator and the denominator 
so we know the antecedent and the consequent. It is expressed as a single ratio. You can multiply it any number of ratios. For example, if you take A by B, C by D, and E by F, the compounded ratio is denoted by their product, simplified in the form ACE over BDF. Then comes a question. Can you compound a ratio with itself? Can you multiply 2 and 2? Why not? Therefore, the compounding of the ratio A over B and C over D is different ratios. If you consider the same ratio A over B with A over B, then it is called a duplicate ratio. Now, A square by B square is nothing but A over B into A over B. We give a special name. This is called the duplicate ratio. A number of questions in the exercise to check whether you understood these concepts correctly. Just like squaring the component, we can also take the square root of the component. Root A is to root B is called the subduplicate. Duplicate and subduplicate we understood. Now we come to introduce triplicate and subtriplicate. For any ratio A is to B, cube the components. Look at this, A cube over B cube. Or A cube is to B cube. This is called the triplicate ratio of A is to B. Likewise, cube root of A is the cube root of B is called the subtriplicate ratio of A is to B. So we have understood ratio, inverse ratio, compounding of ratio, duplicate, subduplicate, triplicate and subtriplicate. Now,